Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen and welcome, welcome to another exciting, another daring propaganda cast with me, your host Imperial Dane, right here on Stuartstorff, yes indeed. Stuartstorff, that blown up, possibly German, possibly French village, or town of industrial nature, yes indeed, with all those trees. I mean, it certainly could be somewhere near Germany, so of course, let's imagine that. Let's imagine it's the Ardennes, or somewhere close to it, let's imagine it's the Hürtgen. And of course, which two forces shall be battling in the Hürtgen, which two forces shall be clashing for dominance from in the southern corner. We are seeing ex Akula or Akula, which could be a submarine type, I think, of this Russian kind, but he's fighting for the Americans. Oh, the confusion, if not for the fact that I was so incredibly clever. Ahem. <coughs> Yes, never mind that. Nonetheless, here he is fighting for the Americans, fighting for the 24th, oh, the 30th Infantry Division, I don't know, the 24th one. And opposing him shall be Tau Downloaded. Yes, that's something yeah, I don't know what he's supposed to be about. Nonetheless, here he is fighting for the Führer Big Light Brigade. Yes, indeed. Figured that one up was the, well, one of the. Furious bodyguard units, which was also thrown into the fight. I mean, you also the the life standard was the first sort of bodyguard unit, then turned into a unit. Then was also the Fuhrer Grenadier Brigade, which have already had sort of a historical feature about it, which was also thrown in. And now we have, of course, the Fuhrer Big Light Brigade. I don't, can't, can't remember that was for. So I don't think it was made from the Großdeutschland. Anyways, let's get right to it. And right away, we're actually noting something odd. I mean, he's going for four pioneers, and we're also rather noticing that. Hey, hang on, our opponent, our opponent isn't British. What could this mean? Oh dear. This is certainly going to be a bit different. And hopefully a bit exciting or interesting. I mean, we could it be some sort of pendant against these sort of four engineers starts from the Americans? Perhaps, you know, four pioneers there my quarters? Could it be sort of trying to replicate the strategy used against the British, against the Americans? Could this be the clever little trick he might be going on here? Of course, if it is clever. But of course, he's right going out for all the territories, in particular going for all the tasty fuel resources in the east. Other pioneers perhaps heading a bit towards the west. Engineers heading eastwards. These Americans shall not be going westwards. I think we're here by some huge piles of wood. Yes, indeed, wood. Good old, um, no, not American, that's probably German wood. Pine by the looks of it, I'm not sure. I mean, I'm not the greatest guesser of wood types. Anyways, we are seeing a focus there. We are seeing Rifeman arriving out, and already, of course, he is securing quite a bit. In fact, he's going for the munitions. In he could be going for the sort of pendant to the American 4 rear start partially, at least. He might, of course, be trying to go for the sort of the skirmish phase and get some grenades, but at the same time, he's also going for all the munitions. I mean, he might be sort of hoping to you know, get some flame for us up for his pioneers, perhaps get the munitions ready for his grenadiers, but certainly, he's got a bit of a plan there that is certainly going to be involving a lot of munitions. Perhaps also fuel, or perhaps just denying it to those rascally Americans. Pioneers coming under fire from the Americans. And of course, currently, I mean, ex Acula has absolutely no bloody idea what's going on. I mean, it's it's not really something I've seen a lot of, you know, as the Americans when fighting against the Wehrmacht. I mean, it's not even something I see in a lot of replays, but, you know, apparently this chap's doing it. And there we go, another Pioneer team under fire. Question is, of course, when will Acula smell the smoke? The Pioneer base, and oh dear, these Pioneers could be going down, but no, they managed to secure the missions with- Oh no! Oh, they did not make it! Heinz and Helmut died, courageously. One wounded, the other, well, beyond wounded. And looks like a Jeep is joining in, the Willys Jeep armed with the 30 caliber air-cooled Browning. Some people like to think that's a 50 caliber, but trust me, a 50 caliber is much larger. Running straight into the base, and of course, you might be sort of getting an idea of what's going on here. Bit of engagement right here. Several engineers converging on the pioneers. Opening up on Richter und Fritz. Of the Führer Big Light Brigade and just cutting them down. Oh dear, Tau is just not really protecting his pioneers. And of course, of course, this is not an entirely bad idea. I mean, he's sort of expecting here, right? He might have been spilled. This sort of thing going on here. And then, of course, he rushed in his jeep to sort of harass the base. Of course, the pioneers could force it out with enough bodies to do so, but at the same time, I mean, this could perhaps be the stage where he could have really finished it off if Mr. Acuda was a bit braver. You know, he could have just, you know, snuck in here. There's a huge gap in the Wehrmacht base, and I think that could partially be because of the fact, which again, they're not sort of the most 
talked about the fact, but a lot of these bases have not really perhaps you know, been completely thought with a Wehrmacht base defense in mind because the MG bunkers have the shortest of all arcs, I believe. I mean, a American bunker is going to have a much larger arc, which could possibly just at least partially cover this. But the MG bunker, no such luck. He could also sneak in through here, actually. Sadly, and I think again, this is a bit where you know, things go wrong. Pioneers just constructing, though. Oh dear. But there we go, the Kriegbergs is ready, and now the Pioneers want blood, they want willies, gee. No, not the actual, you know, willy, there's not some commandant, the willy, ready to die, but now, nonetheless, this jeep is going to go kaput, kaboom. Grandiers on the way, immediately got a bit of munitions right there, no flame flows, apparently. Although, of course, this probably is a bit of a delay, you know, again, lots of Pioneers had to be retrained, took a bit of beating there, and immediately begin salvaging it. Not even letting the fires cool off before they set to work. These stalwart pioneers of the Führer Big Light Brigade, which was again like the Führer Grenadier Brigade, uh, rather almost closer and actually being a full, well, Panzer Division, I believe. Having in fact more armor than a Panzer Grenadier Division, but in fact only lacking the men to sort of make it with only one regiment. Mine's going down there by Akula though, that's good. Good with mining. Although it does sort of get ruined when the Grenadiers see it, you know. I mean, you don't have to then sort of be carrying a minesweeper. There we go. The Lancer's minesweeper grenade, setting it off. We are losing ground. So now you have to be careful with that, and of course Tau downloaded, sort of swiftly illustrated why you have to be careful with it. Otherwise, moving about securing points, this is good. Mr. Akula, so for having secured most of the map, of course, it's going to be a bit of a steep task for the Führer Big Light Brigade. Only one, no, two Grenadier teams now, in fact. Pushing on here and there. And of course, question is, what will Akula be going for? Will he be going for BARs? That would certainly be a good move. Or perhaps some grenades of his own. To counter the Grenadier of Grenades. With the Stahl gun iron, there we go, bit of a fire position going on here. Rafen charging the Grenadiers, have to be a bit careful though, and they are a bit clumped up. And there we go, Stahl gun to Werft at the Rifeman. Oh dear, that didn't actually do much in this case, although it can do much, you know, it just doesn't have quite the radius as the pineapple grenade. I mean, had that been a pineapple grenade from then, that would probably be a lot more messy. But continuing advances here, mines was being handed out, this is good. Interestingly enough, he has the Kafkaf sent up, but he's not immediately getting some veterans here. I mean, veterans you want for the Grenadiers would be good. And we are not seeing... Oh, wait, there we are. BARs, in fact. Yo, not the good best position there. This, you know, fuel tank, which is empty, I'm pretty sure. You know, blocks the line of fire. Now the rifle now a bit forced out of cover. Good grenading right there. Caught out in the open. They need to retreat. The Grenadiers are good shots. They're not false Grenadiers. Oh, dear. Riflemen, get out of there. You... You don't serve your country by dying, you serve by making the other guy die for his country. Remember that speech by Patton? I think it was Patton, anyways. And Flamethrower Engineers, right from in here, gets the Grenadiers in the east. This might be a much slightly more manageable task. Still not more grenades though, not any preparations though I fear from a Kula back then. I'm pretty sure he he wasn't expecting this. Grenadiers, Pioneers retreat. Managed to secure the resources here, but of course Pioneers and Grenadiers push through in the center. No veterans here on the way though, floating a bit of resources. Akula needs to quickly remount. No medic bank stations either, that could also be in help. Troops reinforcing, I hope. I certainly hope so, but again, you know, some mines would have been great, you know, not just here, but you know, perhaps around the points. Perhaps here, you know, just, you know, a bit as you go along. And particularly when you get this much territory, I mean, it's going to be enabled to, unless, of course, your opponent's utterly inept. That he's going to be preparing for some sort of counterattack, and of course, then mines is really one of the main priorities. And right here, Tau download. I don't know what to call him, just call him Tor. But he makes a bit of a mistake, you know, clumping up right next to a pond when he could have been spreading out, taking as many as possible, or perhaps being slightly more clever, laying down some bar while laying down some sandbags, then preparing, and thus taking some points. You know, there's a certainly a few options right there. More grenadiers ready, counterattack towards the east. And counterattacking the South Grenadier. Rifleman Marina against Grenadiers. Veterans who won, giving them a bit of self healing. More riflemen pushing in. Supply ad going up, this is good. No medic station though. More riflemen ready, some freshly trained ones, in fact. And what's going on here? And we are being seeing a bit of suppressive fire, I think. 
Yes, indeed, Grand is getting suppressed, and let's just briefly pause here. He had two paths here, and that's important, I think. He, there's the one right here, you know, across open ground against troops, even still suppressed, you know, they can still hurt back, and they're still grenadiers, they're still nasty. And then, of course, he could have swung around here, avoided a bit of fighting, and then getting into light cover. That probably would have been the better choice. Let's return to the fight again, you know, just note what happens here with these rifles, no health, you know, charging across. Some grenadiers are getting pinned, but you know, the rifle are still taking a bit of losses right there. No, actually, never mind, but still, you know. I don't remember this wrongly, but still. I mean, otherwise, I'd still recommend, you know, going for the other path. And a pioneer team got cut down, I'm afraid. Richter and Fritz did not make it. And another pioneer team. There's some pretty high losses in the. Pioneer unit could be the assets pioneer. I suppose they might have thrown in. Rifle fighting here though. Grenadiers pushing on. Good shots there. Rifle on their own. No support. The enemy oh dear. A cooler. Where is your support? Is it a cooler? Never mind. Never mind. But Rifle now pushing in. Yes, this is good. Counter attack against those dastardly crap grenadiers. And those grenadiers, of course, fight for fatherland, for glory, for steel. You are steel. And now Grenadiers taking up some good positions. This is good, of course. Cover against none. Cover units cover can always make a difference. Oh my goodness. Grenades getting knocked right into it. And the full retreat from the Americans. That was less good. And another Grenadier assault. He's really going heavily for the Grenadiers. And of course, that's sort of the thing you might go for this. And of course, this is rather catching a cooler bit off guard. I mean, again, it's not what you very often see playing as the Americans. I mean, yes, you see a lot of, you know, going for Grenadiers, but... Not in this manner. I'm pretty sure he hadn't been expecting that. And certainly, Mr. Tor is pushing it for all he can. So, of course, question is how will we handle Of course, now we are seeing a counterattack going on through here in this west again. Trying to secure that at least, but of course, slowly but securely getting most of the map. This is looking a bit grim. He is getting a half track. Could work, could work, another engineer team down, uh, now, now it's the Americans losing engineers. More suppressive bodies, but of course nothing to really help them, they're going Supply to be forced out. We I might have recommended an M8 in this case, just, you know, for shooting up those crowds a bit better. Of course, it's getting the upgrade for the gun, nice. Also might recommend a strafing run at this stage. Could be good, awesome artillery, or of course just laying down some bloody mines. I like a move on, of course mines would have helped him greatly. After advancing quad mount on the way, he probably should be waiting until the rest are forwards. Pushing on at all flanks, really using that heavy infantry presence. The Huns are taking our territory. A cooler getting ready. No supplied upgrades, still no medic stations. But there we go, the half track getting ready for the assault. We are losing a still no attempt at cover, a bit of spot wire from the Germans. Must seem a bit saddened by that, but there we go. Quad 50 calibers, and that's a bloody 50 caliber, not that tiny little thing. The Jeep has some mounted on it. Opening up, rifle again, charging across open ground. No attempt to using cover. You know, again, be careful about advancing over open ground. Grenades getting lobbed at the rifleman. Te oh no, these riflemen need to get out of there. Oh no, no, no. no. And he lost them, he should have retreated them. That was quite tragic. Rifle moving in. Yes, trying to reinforce, of course. Half tag opening up. No grenades killed there. Another assault here again. Heavy losses. No real usage of cover. This is really going to bleed out a cooler in the long run. Grenades under. Heavy fire, though, from the half track. Quart 50s. Opening up. Really tearing through those grenadiers. Suppressing them even. That's probably going to be a pack 38 soon, I suppose. But he's only going to be needing a bit of reinforcement. Oh dear, these riflemen need to get back immediately. Again, he suffered heavy losses against so few grenades. Retreat, mate! Get out of there! Please! Think of your men! And lay down some bloody mind for now. No, get out of there! Retreat! This is just terrible. Half check moving in. Ready to try and salvage the situation, but really. Retreat those riflemen, get them freshly reinforced, and then get a move on. Getting an anti tank gun now. I think that's a misevaluation of the situation. Again, retreat we there. The Send half to again. Get those riflemen out of there. Pass the, pass the 
Oh dear. Just barely making it. But in this case, I mean, the anti tank gun isn't going to do anything. Reinforce those riflemen. Perhaps get the supply and upgrade. Get a medic station. Perhaps get some grenades. But you know, don't get a bleeding anti tank gun. Panzerfix now ready for those grenades. That's only going to make things a bit harder in dislodging them. Pack 38 ready. And my goodness, he's really going heavy on those grenades, isn't he? I mean, in this case, I think it might have been a better choice to actually get a weapon support and then get a 30 caliber. I mean, it would be having a field day with these huge forces of grenades. Or just get a grenade. Oh dear. Grenadier swarming through the center. Engineer down, trying to lay down once again. It does seem to be a bit slow in getting up those mines, I'm afraid. Quite so. Losing ground out there. Let's speed up things a bit. Counter tank in. Grenadiers trying to run out. Coming under heavy fire. Swift force moving through here. Some taking some losses. Might have hit a mine actually. Or something else. Forward supply lines are broken. Grenadiers are broken from the east. Rifleman sneaking in here. <laughs> Still think one of our munitions points. That a weapon support center, some machine guns, perhaps a mortar would be a good move here against all of these grenadiers. Rifleman moving against the rifleman, rifleman pulling back towards the woods. Opening up on the grenadiers out in the open. Strafing run is ready. This could could that have been what going, went on there? Don't think so. At least I don't hope so. I hope it's only hope I don't miss it. We have territory out of supply. And there we go, half tech moving in. Could be running into the pack of doom. At least in this case, because it's so thinly armored. Veterans you want for the half tech increases speed at this stage. I believe later on it gets some damage and accuracy bonus and such. Grenades on the riflemen. Does little damage, but these riflemen need to get out of there. Securing as much as they can from the east. This is good, though. Still, the half tech is. No, the anti tank is currently not really doing a lot. Oh dear, that's a bit of a mistake. I think they are running right in front of an anti aircraft gun like that. And you're only squishy infantry. Interestingly enough, he's not bothered getting further veterans before his grenades. He's not bothered getting elite armor. That seems a bit curious. Rifleman's still sneaking about there. Could perhaps, you know, detail only one unit to do that. And then, of course, detail the rest to sort of launching an attack here. I mean, these Rifleman grenades are awfully wounded. You know, press the advantage, force them off again. I can't help but feel he might be sort of misdividing his resources now. An armored car is ready. Engineers ready. Apparently the only ones in some time. Führer. Why is he hiding those rifles out in the building? Bit of a mistake there. And Grenier is taking up position right in front of them. Get the rest of the army there. Oh dear, these Grenier's need to get out. Grenade getting locked at the rifleman. Oh dear. Barely getting out of there. It's quite some losses, quite some wounds. M8 moves in, hoping to perhaps get off a killing shot on those grenadiers. Instead, takes hits from the Panzer Jack. Right, we need to get out of the behind a BAR. Oh dear. And where are those other riflemen? Get them into the fight. Grenadiers pick up a BAR. Steal it from the Yankees. Half track rushes in. Grenadiers under fun, there we go, there are the riflemen, there are the riflemen. Half tech moving in. Has to be careful, doesn't want to get a call. Uh, why didn't it focus down the panzer trackers? Oh dear. And fighting here. Running into an LMG, that's interesting. Riflemen getting cut down. And looks like some engineers are as well. The elite armor would certainly have helped them. Still. Oh my goodness, he's just tearing through those right. Bugger me, hang on. I think he's gone terror. That might actually explain it, but. Goodness gracious, this is the German Rampo. This is Helmut. No, that we haven't already used him. It's, it's Klaus. Yes, indeed. More Grenadiers. Oh, goodness gracious, that was a Grenadier going down. A full team dead. That's end going to help. And there we go. Bit of finding that. Lots of automatic fire. These Grenadiers are not doing well. And he's stopping right in front of... No, right in front of the Grenadier with the LMG and the seal, the fanatism. I mean, goodness gracious, this is Klaus, the threat of the Allied army. The man who, I don't know, tore through an entire Allied column in North Africa.
that sort of business. And well, he was a grenadier with an LMG and fanatism. This was Klaus. I mean, this was no just no ordinary grenadier. This was Klaus. Uh, Klaus takes on my throat. Need something to drink. There we go. Munitions point under attack. But really, I mean, Klaus. Oh my goodness, that man just went completely insane. Having seen his fallen comrades, he went and nuts with the LMG 42, tore through the Riveman, tore through the Airborne, tore through a few other things as well, I imagine. And those engineers really need to get about repairing that armored car quickly instead of standing about being awfully vulnerable. Repair, ready repair. Airborne. airborne ready, not entirely sure why he wants those chaps though, but still. But also recommended some grenades, of course. And now we're seeing the Panzer Command, the Fjord Big Light Brigade, going for some Panzer Command action, calling upon the Panzer Regiment. Engineers again, why aren't they repairing the M8? And still, I think again, you know, a medic station would get it, particularly after Klaus had his fun. Or oh, Klaus. <coughs> The and the, the engineer went down to the guy with the Luger. Granny is attacking. LMG ready as well. Has to, you know, again. Oh dear, he climbed up. He got strafed. He got strafed. Counter attack. Counter attack. Now, Kakula. Push the assault. Oh no, Klaus. He's seeing red again. Oh no. They've unleashed Klaus. <laughs> and the rifleman got slaughtered. You do not unleash the Klaus unless you're prepared. And just look, a veteran T2 rifle team running at absolute horror of Klaus. And where's and of course the M8 didn't get repaired. Oh no, Klaus! And yes again, look, Klaus, and everybody runs. Oh, the inhumanity, Klaus! Now with veteran T2. Supply lines are broken. We have territory. Germans are seizing territory. And of course no engineers, because Mr. Luger guy, who bravely died during the strafing run, probably a friend of Klaus, got the engineer so the M8 can't actually be used, bit of a waste there. Another engineer team is on the way, and of course the entire American army is now trying to sort of evade Klaus, who's hiding somewhere I think. Has, is he actually on the field yet? He hasn't been retreated, no. Klaus is still there on the front lines. Still furious, still fanatical. Still with his LMG 42. Klaus hiding in the woods. American assault going in against the Grenadiers. On their own, no LMG for them. And are the Grenadiers counterattacking the woods but running into a lot of rifle and a lot of airborne. This could end up. Dastardly, no, they just make it out there. Pani is running in. Rive Granny is taking quite a few losses. It's actually time to go look at Tao, who's clearly got some plans with some armor. Some big armor. Actually, time for the mid game analysis. A bit delayed on that. Sorry, but again, you know, Klaus. Oh, he's got more LMGs, but you know, they're still not Klaus. I mean, really, a bit of lack of aggression right here on a cool, a bit, you know not prioritizing his resources right and I think that really could have helped and again not really getting off enough mines when he could have good strafing round though but just wasn't full up on it and of course I mean he panicked against Klaus I mean you know most ordinary commanders I suppose would have done that <coughs> I have to stop myself from sounding a bit too smart arsey but nonetheless you know and of course now he's really been pushing the grenades he probably couldn't have gone for some panzers earlier but apparently got a bit caught up you know in the awesome might of Klaus all the way, you know, doing all right, pushing on, slowly strangling the Americans. Could have done with the medic bunker, but now getting the Panzer Command, and he's probably going to pull out something nasty. But let us return to the fight. Of course, I probably a cool up could perhaps still turn this around. He might want to get some recall right for these chaps just in case. Granny is forced away. Quickly need to take territory. And oh dear, Klaus and the other Granny LMG team moving in. They're moving in. And there we go, opening up on the rifle, rifle pulling away. 
too afraid to face the might of clouds and it's also we floating an awful lot of resource command points. That's not really useful now, is it? Clouds popping into the building. Opening up on the veteran C2 riflemen. And shouting that they could at least die like men. Opening up on the rifle veteran T2, a bit tougher, but there we go, one down there, no match for Klaus. Hiding in his barracks. And mate moving in, oh dear, Klaus, get out, get out, Klaus, there we go. Retreat. More grenades moving in. And the rifle in fact into a full retreat again, note, you know, the LMG does not fire on the move, it needs to stand still to function. Klaus getting a few more on the retreat, M8 moves in, oh dear, Klaus, no. Oh. Phew. Gets out of there in time. Panda Jake opens up on the M8. Panzer Command calling in the Panthers. And this age with all the Panthers would actually have been the sort of more numerous tank than actually the Panzer IV. Fun fact that. Airborne moving about still, no recoil as well. Moving in here against the Grenadiers. Again, remember, use cover. Akula, you seem to be having a bit of trouble using the cover. Remember, cover. That bit that places the bullet. A little bit far away from you, and standing out in the open against an LMG. And there we go, just tearing through the airborne with all some car 98 fire. M8 moving in from the flank though. And we are seeing recall his rivals actually. Opening up on the airborne. M8 flanking in. Airborne taking up positions. There we go, actually using some heavy cover. M8 taking quite a bit of damage. Panther moving in. Anti tank gun could open up. up. Armor piercing rounds, get armor piercing rounds! Oh dear, and still no vet, no command points! Looks like the Panther might actually just try to flank it. No, he stops up and reverses. Airborne, taking quite a few losses there, needs to retreat. And the Cordless Rods are nowhere near to actually deal with that Panther, that bit of tragedy. And oh dear, he went for a tank deep, I'm not entirely sure he wanted that. You know, he wanted more infantry in the field, perhaps some more airborne. A bit too late now though. Grenadiers on the hunt for an M8, and they get it! And Klaus once more has a full unit to fight alongside with new friends. Rifleman barely getting out of there, veteran 2 only some engineers facing off against LMG. Grenadiers, awfully a bit wounded. Enraged Grenadier, in fact, soon. Opening up, taking quite a bit of fire though. Forcing the rifle away, cutting a few down. More forces moving in. Granny is moving in to support. Panther could also be moving in, would be perhaps an idea. Also getting some veterans for it. Grenade on the rifleman. Oh, the only one grenadier. He's going to see blood. Anti tank gun pulls up. We are seeing a tank destroyer ready. No Sherman though, could have been helpful against those Grenadiers. But looking rather grim for a cooler now, calling in off map drop, supply drop. Still has a bit of the map. Let's be this over, we're seeing another Panther in fact. No veterans before though, that's a bit of a miss. And now he's actually actively going for it. Machine gun mortar ready, but he isn't going for it. A bit of a miss there I think as well. Rushing east, rushing east. Grenier opening up. Sticky bomb on the Panther. Oh dear, except there's nothing to really capitalize on it. The airborne are there though. Damage engine, move in the airborne. Move in the airborne. Right now in the open though versus two Panthers. The airborne opening up on the Panthers. More Sticky bomb on the other one. Grenadiers moving in again, not standing still with LMGs. Have to remember that. Grenade on the airborne, airborne. Oh dear, forced retreat. Rifle not looking too well either. Still no grenades for the Americans. M18 just hanging about in the base. A bit of a waste that could have perhaps, you know, been useful to support here. Hit the rear of the Panthers, knock them out perhaps. Missed opportunity here by Kula. Quite a few of those. Osman now ready. By this stage of war, there probably would have been a few Osmans ready around. Now these rifles are just getting torn apart. M18 moves in, spotting a weak and easy kill. Going in for the Ostwin, which cannot defend itself. Yes. 
Veterans seek gain. A 50 caliber could have helped a bit against those grenadiers. You know, it's not going to do a vast amount, but it could still suppress and do a bit of damage. Oh dear, grenadier going down. More LMGs, Riven getting torn to bits. Grenadiers need no, no, actually needs to get way too much far being directed against them. Piney is hiding in the west. Force retreat could work here. But no such luck. King Tiger could also be called in. More machine gun fire, rifle going down. Now the pioneers are discovered they can no longer hide. They're losing territory. And now the pants on the move, getting a bit of veteran C. Another rifleman down, and another BAR left behind. But clearly these airborne are of the policy of no BAR left behind. They don't really care about the men, but the equipment is valuable. Reporting. Still no tiger, still no fire storm, not even a. Oh, wait, no, there we go, tiger ready. And he's even gone for an inspired assault, though I don't think he will need it at this stage. Though he could have used it earlier, quite the effect. Not really a lot else going on. Panther pulling away, could be calling the king tiger in. And we are seeing an assault going in there. <coughs> Rifle forced away. Another has been ready. Oh dear. Position held here. 40 kills for these grenadiers with the NMG 42 thanks to Klaus. The third Reich's answer to Rambo. Or possibly Rambo by the United States answer to Klaus. And there we go. Now he gets grenades. Now. Wanker. Um, I mean, um, poor disparate American soldier. <coughs> yeah, let's speed this up. This is pretty much the victory of the Fear Big Light Brigade in the Ardennes. Now he does get a Sherman as well. A bit late with that. Tang through the Grenadiers, obviously. Could have done a bit more with that a lot earlier, I think. Probably could have gotten that if he not lost so many units. A bit here. Slaughter of the Americans. And GG, GG, game over. This was actually a cooler sending it in. Fancy that. But of course, question becomes, what can we learn from this? Well, in this case, I mean, a cooler really made some mistakes here, like, you know, not really good getting the best use of cover, you know, could have moved through cover in some cases, and instead chose, you know, the open ground. Probably could have gone for grenades, probably could have gone for the heavy machine gun against all those grenades, but certainly also, I mean, he probably wasn't expecting this. I mean, I wouldn't have been expecting this. <coughs> At the same time, he probably could have done with a lot more mines, I think. Strafing runs were all right, but, you know, perhaps also a bit more on that. And certainly, I don't think he, at times, quite managed his resources the best. He probably would have done well with a medic station earlier. And some other bits. But generally, the unit preservation, his sort of ability to fight in the longer run was a bit hampered by himself. But there you go, hope you enjoyed it. If you did, why not subscribe or tell your friends? And if you didn't, well, why not send in a replay of your own? And of course, remember, Klaus is watching.